Thank you for joining me again. In this video, we're going to be looking at some more logic. And so what we're going to start off with is a statement, and which is actually a quotation from Lewis Carroll in Symbolic Logic, his book. And we're going to take that, or we're actually going to write that in Symbolic Logic. Then we're going to negate the statement using Symbolic Logic, and then we're going to convert it back to an English sentence. So now as we look at this, we just want to start off and we want to read the statement. And it says, everyone who is sane can do logic. Every, or none of your sons can do logic. So what we want to do is combine those and write those out. So as we start to do that, we want to look first at, is there anything that's variable in here? Anything that's going to change? And we notice that he's talking about everyone or your sons. So he's talking about people. So I'm going to have different people that I'm going to check against different statements. So I'm going to say, let P be a person. So P is a person. And that's going to be going to remain variable throughout this so that I can plug this into different statements and determine the truth value based on the different person. Now, once I get done with that, I want to say, well, are there any other variables? And it seems like that's the only one I'm going to need to get through here. So the next thing I want to look at are any simple statements. And so I want to make sure that I don't have any connectives in my simple statement. So everyone is going to be a connective related to for all. So we're going to leave that out as a simple statement. And so who is saying can do logic. And so within here, there's something about being sane and doing logic. And so there's going to be some type of connective in there. So we kind of want to break that up into smaller statements. And so if we just look at is saying and can do logic, those are both simple statements that I can't break up anymore. So I'm going to define those and I'm going to say something along the lines of Q sub 1 of P is that person P is sane. So now I'm going to check each person and say are they sane? If that person is sane, this is a true statement. If that person is not sane, then this is a false statement. And I'm going to say Q sub 2 of P is that person can do logic. So now notice here that I'm using Q's instead of P's. I use P as a variable, which has normally been used as a statement in our logic section. But I really wanted to use something that made sense for person or people. So P made sense, hence that's why I'm using Q's. I'm going to use Q1, Q2, and if necessary, Q3 and Q4, just so I don't have to make up a lot of different letters for different statements. Now, the next thing we're going to do is look at the next sentence. And if we look at none, notice that means that not true for everyone. So that's going to be a connective of your sons can do logic. So if we look at this, there's something about your sons and can do logic. And so we can actually break those up because you can be your sons and being able to do logic. And so we're going to have the statement here. Well, the person can do logic, which we actually already have. So we don't have to rewrite that one. But we also have that that person is your son. So what I'm going to say is that my third statement is that P is your son. So now if I look at this, I have gone through, I've parsed out that the variable is P is a person. My first statement is Q1 of P is that person is sane. Q2 of P is that person can do logic. Q3 of P is that person is your son. And so now we have to connect those statements. All right, I've erased this and made this a little bit smaller just so we have more room on the board. And so just to keep track of what was happening, I shortened these to say P is a person, Q1 of P is that person is sane, Q2 is that person can do logic, and Q3 is that person is your son. So I want these over for reference, but I will need more room. Now, if we look at these, how do we connect these is we start off with everyone. So what that means is all people. So therefore that's a for all persons. So the way we would write that is for all P. Notice the upside down A for for all. So for all P, we have what? Well, 
if any person who is sane can do logic. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if that person is sane, they can do logic. Or if that person is sane, then they can do logic. And so what we have is really an if-then statement without the if-then written explicitly in there. So we're saying if the person is sane, then they can do logic. So notice that what I did there was I rewrote the sentence so that it more closely resembled a logical statement than just a colloquial sentence. And so in order to do that, I started filling in words in order to write this out equivalently so that it made more sense to me. What I ended up with then was if the person is sane, then they can do logic. So the way I want to write that is, well, I'm going to have a conditional statement, an if then, and that person is sane was Q1, that person can do logic was Q2, so we're going to have if Q1 of P, then Q2 of P. And what we have in the end then is that the first statement can be written for all P, we have and so I'm going to use a comma here. So for all P, we have Q1 of P, if Q1 of P, then Q2 of P. So that is for all people. If that person is sane, then that person can do logic. Now, as we look at the second sentence, we're going to say none of your sons can do logic. So the none is also going to be a for all, but there's going to be some type of negation in here as we go through because this would be true for all of your sons or it's going to be actually false for all of your sons and so we're going to say for all p again something's going to happen now how are we going to combine these together is well none of your sons can do logic so therefore if that are your son they cannot do logic so that is if that person is your son then they cannot do logic and so that is if that person is your son is q3 of p if that then they cannot do logic is not q2 of p and so what we would get is that the second statement says for all people if they are your son then they cannot do logic now notice that we made both of these claims at the same time, so what we're really saying here is that we should connect these two sentences with an AND because I'm making both claims. So therefore I should say the first sentence AND the second sentence. And now I have taken the statement and I have written it in symbolic logic. So the next part of the problem is to negate this statement that we came up with. So here it is our statement in symbolic logic, and now we want to negate that. So now if we're going to negate this, what we're going to do is take this step by step and negate as we go. And so the idea is that we're going to use our equivalent statements that we already know in order to simplify this to the point where we're no longer negating more than one thing at once, but we've distributed the negation all the way through. The first thing we notice here is that we have the negation of an AND. So what is the negation of an AND? Well, we know from De Morgan's law that we can distribute the negation across the AND, but the AND becomes an OR, and then we negate each of the pieces. So what we end up with is not the first piece, and then instead of an AND we have OR, not the second piece. Now that we've distributed across the AND and made it an OR, what we have is, well, now we have simpler problems to deal with. While we have two of them, we still have easier problems to deal with because it's not quite as big. So as I look at this first statement here, what I notice is that we have a for all. So when we're negating a for all, the for all becomes a there exists. And then we negate the remaining statement. So we have there exists a P such that not Q1 of P if that, then Q2 of P. And doing the same thing on the other side, we get there exists a P such that not Q3 of P. If that, then not Q2 of P. All right, as we continue.
continue to work our way in. We've moved in, we've got, gone past the for all, we've replaced that with if there exists, and now we have to negate this if then. Now notice, to negate an if then, we don't have a nice rule to just say, well, the negation of if P then Q is this. So the way we've been doing that is we have to use a different equivalence, and the equivalence we're gonna use here is that if P then Q is equivalent to not P or Q. And so now we did show that in class, and if you want to see that, it is available on the written version of this in the blog where the link is available below. But we could make a truth table for this, we would make a truth table for this, and we would say that, okay, the truth values are the same for any value of P and Q. So we call these equivalent. So anywhere I see this, I can now write this, and they would have the same truth values. So we're going to do that for these two statements, and we're going to turn if q1 then p then q2 of p and we're going to say let's negate the if part and keep the then part with an or in between and then we're going to do the same thing over here is we're going to negate the if part and keep the then part with an or in between and so then we're going to end up with well now note we haven't negated yet we're just replacing these portions all right so i've rewritten those statements and I've turned the if q1 of p, then q2 of p into a not q1 of p or q2 of p. And I've turned the q3 of p, if that, then not q2 of p into not q3 of p or not q2 of p. And so what I want to do now is I want to continue distributing my negation. And I'm going to distribute that across here. So now we have an or. So if I negate across an or, we're going to turn that into an and. And we're going to negate each piece. So what we get here is there exists a P such that not not Q1 of P and not Q2 of P. And then we're going to take that with or there exists a P such that not not Q3 of P and not not q2 of p so again i'm just distributing across the ors i'm turning them to ands i negate each of the pieces as i do so and so what i end up with is not not q1 of p and not q2 of p and then here i have not not q3 of p and not not q2 of p now the last step is just to say okay well we have that a negation of a negation is just the original statement. Again, that's one of the equivalences we showed in class. So what we can do here is we can simplify this by getting rid of the double negations. And we could say instead of not, not Q1, we just have Q1. We only have one not here, so we're going to leave it. Here we have two. Here we have two, so we're erasing them. And they're going to cancel out. And so what I end up with is... There exists a P such that Q1 of P and not Q2 of P, or there exists a P such that Q3 of P and Q2 of P. All right, the last part of this problem is to turn our statement back into an English sentence. So we have the negation from before was there exists a P such that Q1 of P and not Q2 of P, or there exists a P such that Q3 of P and Q2 of P. So what we want to do with that is we want to turn that back into an English sentence by remembering that P is a person, Q1 of P is that person's saying, Q2 of P that person can do logic, and Q3 of P is that person is your son. So now if I just read this as is, what this is going to say is there is a person such that that person is saying and that person cannot do logic. Or there is a person who is your son and can do logic. So if I combine those together, what I end up getting is that there is either a person who is sane but can't do logic, or one of your sons can do logic. And so if I combine those together as a colloquial statement, I would say that there's a person who's sane but can't do logic, or one of your sons can do logic. And so if I write that out, I have there is someone who is sane 
but can't do logic. Or one of your sons, or I should say at least one of your sons, can do logic. Alright, so now we've combined that together. We started off with a statement, a quotation. We've turned it into symbolic logic. We've negated it using our rules for negation and equivalent statements. And then we've turned that negation back into our original English statement by remembering what each of those statements stood for and then trying to turn it into something that we could say and explain to somebody else. So if you'd like to see more problems, you can check out the rest of this playlist available up here. Also, please sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see when we have more of these coming up. In addition to that, you can also check out the link available in the description below to see the written version of each of these problems so that you can pull that up to follow along with the video or to do on your own for extra practice. Thank you and good luck with your studying.